For years, the common wisdom went that Macs and PCs could never work well together. These days, however, both Microsoft and Apple have done significant work to ensure they work great in cooperation with each other. With that in mind, there are still a few glaring issues that prevent working between the two from being as seamless as it could be. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus, and in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how to tackle one of those glaring issues by enabling writing to NTFS drives in OS X without any third-party software. That's right. This is functionality that's been built into OS X for some time, but for whatever reason, it's an option that Apple has chosen to hide from the sight of the average user. What this means for you is that in order to enable writing to an NTFS drive on a Mac, we're going to need to dive into the terminal, which is located within the Utilities folder on your Mac. Like I've said before, don't let a case of terminal phobia get in the way of you and your end goal. In all honesty, you don't even really need to understand what the commands that you'll be entering mean. Just buckle up and follow my lead. First things first, we're going to type sudo nano slash etc slash fstab. The sudo command is telling the terminal that we'd like to be given administrator access to the command line. This means that you're going to need to enter your administrator password. I'm entering mine right now. But rather than showing what I'm typing, the terminal is actually showing nothing at all. For a new terminal user, this is definitely a strange behavior, but again, it's one that's totally normal. Once you've finished typing your password, press enter, and you can see we've been brought to a program that looks like it's something out of the 80s. It's called Nano, and it's the text editor that's built into the OS X terminal. The file that we're editing is called fstab, and it's a system configuration file that's responsible for the drives and partitions connected to our Mac. Now that we're in a text editor, what do you say we edit some text? First, I'll type label equals in all caps, with no space before or after. Next, I'll head back to the finder to find the name of my drive. In my case, it's called demo. Back in the terminal, Copy the name of your drive exactly as you saw it in the finder. Your drive's name should contain no spaces, as adding a space to the file would tell your Mac to interpret whatever's after that space as a separate command, which is not something that we'd like to do. Once you've typed label equals and then the name of your drive, press space and add the text ntfs space rw comma auto comma no browse. If you didn't catch that, don't worry. I've included the full text of the command in the body of this quick tip. When you're finished typing that out, press Ctrl O to save the file. And then just hit enter once more so that nano will leave the file name unchanged. Now I'll just press Ctrl X to exit. You can now breathe a sigh of relief because we're done working in the terminal. We're going to head back to the finder once more, this time to unmount the drive. With the drive unmounted, I'll unplug it from my Mac and then plug it right back in again. Now you're probably saying to yourself, oh no, I just plugged my drive back in, why isn't it showing up in the finder? Well you can actually breathe another sigh of relief, because that's exactly what was supposed to happen. Since it's still a hidden feature, even when enabled, Apple's NTFS driver won't show your drives in the sidebar under the Devices view like usual, but that doesn't mean that they're not mounted. Luckily, there's a pretty simple workaround for this. I'll head up to Finder's menu bar, and click Go, and then Go to Folder. Here, all I'm going to type is backslash, volumes, and then press Enter. Voila! I've just navigated to the system's hidden volumes folder, and as you can see, the demo drive is right where it should be. If you don't feel like repeating that final step every time you want to access your drive, don't hesitate to drag it to your favorites in the sidebar, like so. Now check this out. You see this important file that I could only read before? It's now available to me to read and write to my heart's content. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus, showing you how to give your Mac read and write access to NTFS drives.